Welcome to worship this morning. It's so good to see you here. I'm David Hall. I'm the minister of evangelism, and it's good to have you here. It's also good to know we have others worshiping with us from home. Welcome uh, this morning. During uh, this next week, we will be starting something called March Madness. I'm not talking about basketball or the NCAA. This is Missions March Madness, our March Missions Madness all through the month. We're going to be serving our community with a variety of projects. Those are listed on our website for you to, to uh, select those that look appealing to you. I went there yesterday and signed up, and I invite you to do that as well. These are all good for individuals or for families to do together. The ladies out at the information desk asked that I announce this morning that it's a, an opportunity for you all to buy your, your Mad Hatter's tea tickets, and uh, so you need to go ahead and get those if you haven't yet. They are available. Next Sunday in all of our services, we'll be celebrating Holy Communion. We look forward to that, and for those of you who worship at home, we hope that you will participate with us. There are three important dates. There are lots of important dates coming up, but three in particular that we'd ask that you put on your calendar so that you can enjoy these, participate in them, invite others to come, and, uh, and serve in some of these. The first one is our community Easter egg hunt on Saturday, April 1st. This is a huge event, and we need lots of uh, candy-filled Easter eggs. So bring those if you would. If you prefer, make a monetary contribution because we can take the money and buy bulk candy then fill the eggs that we already have. It takes hundreds and hundreds, probably thousands of eggs to do this, so your help is really appreciated on that. Number two, our vacation church school here at Christ Church will be the week of June 12th through the 15th. And then number three, we are hosting Connect Camp again this year. That was awesome last year. We're going to do it again this year, and it goes from July 10th through the 14th. This video will show you what it's like. That is a high energy event and a lot of fun. So bring kids, grandchildren, invite neighbors to come to that July 10th through the 14th. Now we hope you'll register your attendance. If you're sitting closest to the aisle, if you look up, there's a blue attendance pad in front of you on the back of the seat in the row ahead of you. If you would take that out, write in your name and contact information, pass it along your row and back. And for those of you worshiping at home, please open your Christ Church app and let us know you're worshiping with us. Thank you. Let's stand this morning and sing our hymn of praise to God be the glory, great things he has done. To
seated. Now one of our youth choir members is going to come and read the scripture for us, Katie Parnell. She's our senior, and you'll get to hear her sing just a little bit later. All right, our scripture today is from Luke 4, 1 through 13, and it says, Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, left the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and at the end of them he was hungry. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, tell the stone to become bread. Jesus answers, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone. The devil led him up a high place and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And he said to him, I will give you all their authority and splendor. It has been given to me. I can give it to anyone I want to. If you worship me, it all will be yours. Jesus answered, It is written, 
Worship the Lord as your God and serve him only. The devil led him to Jerusalem and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down from here. For it is written, he will command his angels concerning you to guard you carefully. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against the stone. Jesus answered, it is said, do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil has finished all this tempting, he left him upon an opportune time. This is the word of God for the people of God.
Christ Church has a practice of opening our doors to community groups and all kinds of community events. This past week, for two days, we had the school's all-county band here. It was a noisy time, but it was also a good time. It's so good that we can provide a safe, clean facility for groups who need to meet here. We can only do that through your generosity and your giving. We can do that today as we exit by uh, placing our offering in the boxes provided in the atrium. You can always send in a check or go online through the app or our website to give. Thank you for your generosity. Now would you bow with me as we go to God in prayer. Almighty God, we thank you today for the blessings that you shower upon us, both individually and as a church. We know that as you give, we are also to give back to others. And so we thank you for these awesome facilities, these buildings that we have here on this campus that enable us to be in ministry. And perhaps a part of our sharing and giving back is allowing those to be used by others. Help us always to do just that. Sometimes as we hear the news, we are troubled by bad things that happen in our city, in our country, and around the world. We are prone when we hear bad news to worry. But while he was here among us, your son taught us not to worry. In fact, he reminded us that there's nothing that we can change by, the, by worrying. But instead, he called us to action, to live out our faith. And so today, we are reminded that while we cannot totally change the world, we can impact lives and people around us. During this season of Lent, we would ask that you help us to be especially observant, that we might notice the person who needs an encouraging word or, or a helping hand. You send us out into the world every single day and help us never to miss an opportunity to be your servants the servants of your Son, Jesus Christ. We have some among us who have lost loved ones, and they grieve, and we ask for your comfort. Others are ill or they're facing surgeries, and we ask that you bring to them healing and, and help in their recovery. You've given a special message to Pastor Nathan, and that message is for us, so bless him as he comes to bring that word to us. And now we pray together as your Son taught us, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This week, we joined with Christians all over the world in beginning the season of Lent, those 40 days that lead us to Easter, not counting the Sundays. This season is a time of both personal examination, personal spiritual uh, examination of ourselves, as well as continuing to learn what it means to be the people of Christ, the church together. As part of what this season's all about, I'm inviting you today to join me in reciting the World Methodist Social Affirmation. It is one of the affirmations of faith that's in our United Methodist hymnal, and I think it very much fits with what this season is all about. I simply invite you to read through it with me, and then you can decide for yourself if this is what you believe. There are four paragraphs to it, four sections to it. After the opening section, now hear this, after the opening section, the first slide, we're going to pause for a moment because I'm going to talk about how we're going to read the other three sections. They're a little bit different. Let's join together. We believe in God, creator of the world and of all people, and in Jesus Christ, incarnate among us, who died and rose again, and in the Holy Spirit, present with us to guide, strengthen, and comfort. Now, with these next three paragraphs, there is an opening statement. You see it here on this next slide. Let's look at the next slide. You'll see an opening statement, and then there will be subsequent lines that complete that opening statement. So we'll read the opening statement initially, 
then it will stay on the next few slides as other lines come in to complete that statement. At that point, we'll only read the new part of each line. Hope that makes sense. Just follow along. You'll get it. Here we go. We rejoice in every sign of God's kingdom, in the upholding of human dignity and community, in every expression of love, justice, and reconciliation, in each act of self-giving on behalf of others, in the abundance of God's gifts entrusted to us that all may have enough, in all responsible use of the earth's resources. New paragraph. We'll read the first line on this one. We confess our sin, individual and collective, by silence or action, through the violation of human dignity based on race, class, age, sex, nation, or faith, through the exploitation of people because of greed or indifference, through the misuse of power in personal, communal, national, and international life, through the search for security by those military and economic forces that threaten human existence, through the abuse of technology which endangers the earth and all life upon it. New paragraph. We commit ourselves individually and as a community to the way of Christ, to take up the cross, to seek abundant life for all humanity, to struggle for peace with justice and freedom, to risk ourselves in faith, hope, and love, praying that God's kingdom may come. Amen and amen. Thank you. When we get to the end of the Lenten season, out on the other side of the Lenten season, we will once again remember the story of Jesus, and especially that last week leading into his crucifixion. We'll also celebrate Easter. We'll celebrate God's victory over death and all that God did through Jesus to give us new life. That promise of new life certainly includes living again after we physically die in this world, but it also includes the new life we can live while we're alive in this world. That's what I'm inviting you to do, to explore during these next six weeks, a journey to your own personal Easter. For those of you who are already followers of Jesus Christ, this is an opportunity for you to do some spiritual self-testing on how you're doing in serving his mission, on how you're doing in making him the Lord of your life, the guide of your life. For those of you who have not yet made that commitment to Christ, to the person and way of Jesus, know that he invites you to this new life. He invites you to experience your own personal Easter, to experience life at its best and fullest. Back when I was in high school and college, and yes, I know the teenagers among us immediately think that must have been like 100 years ago. When I was back in school, every once in a while I remember, not all that often, but every once in a while we would have what was referred to as an open book test. Here's the test. You can use your textbook. You can use any notes you've made so far in our classes. Uh, you can use all of that to have the answers. Well, wonderful. That sounds easy. Surely I can ace this one. Unless, anybody could ace it, unless you hadn't opened the book. Unless you hadn't taken any notes. Unless you hadn't been paying attention to the teacher. It was a kind of a sly way for the teacher to find out who had actually cracked the book, who had actually been taking notes. Had they done their prep work even for an open book test. Well, being in school, in whatever kind of test, there were certainly other kind of tests that were much harder than that one. Being in school is not the only time we encounter tests in life, is it? We face them all the time throughout our life. All kinds of different tests. Some of them are kind of small, maybe seem insignificant at the time, but they all build on each other and how we do with them. Sometimes we have crisis that enters our lives, situations. Uh, how will we 
deal with those crises. It's a test at times. Have we prepared spiritually for those times of crisis? And then there are other times we talk about having our patience tested. You ever had your patience? You know, we say this person or that situation or that group, test my patience. Or sometimes we have what we might call moral or ethical dilemmas, test that we face. could be something as simple as we find a purse or a wallet, and the test is, are we going to return it, try to return it to the owner? And if we return it to the owner, are we going to leave all the money in it? It can be simple things sometimes, but they really are important things. The gospel writers who wrote about the life and ministry of Jesus tell us about the fact that as he began his ministry, immediately in beginning his ministry, he faced a time of testing, of temptation. This story is always the gospel reading for the first Sunday in Lent. Right after Jesus was baptized, we're told that the Holy Spirit led him out into the wilderness for this time of testing. I so appreciate Luke in particular for including as a detail in his story that at the end of the story he says the devil left him until an opportune time. That tells me that Luke wanted to emphasize this wasn't the only time Jesus faced, te faced testing or temptation. Just like all the rest of us, he faced them throughout his life, throughout his ministry. Jesus began this time of testing by fasting for 40 days, nothing to eat for over a month. Can you imagine how susceptible he was and how tempting it would have been to turn those rocks around him into bread? I don't know about you, but I would have probably already not only had some bread, but probably a few oatmeal raisin cookies had to be so very tempting. In other words, Jesus, will you use your power for your own benefit? We all at times have to face that one. Will we use our power, whatever it is, for our own benefit? Jesus drew a line right at the beginning of his ministry. I believe it was, that was not just a temptation in that moment, but he faced that temptation throughout his ministry. He, he faced that temptation even when he stood before Pilate. My, it had to be tempting then. Jesus, we, we all have to decide, and Jesus drew a line and said, I will not use my power for my own benefit. I'm convinced that each of his tests were about how he was going to conduct his ministry. Another way to put that, which again applies to all of us as followers of Jesus, he had to decide how he was going to represent God in this world. He had just been baptized. He had heard this voice from heaven that said, this is my son with whom I'm well pleased. So he's been affirmed in his baptism. We are affirmed in our baptism that we belong to God. Now, what does it look like to live for God as a child of God out there in the world? So, to those of you who have been baptized, to those of you who have made that commitment to follow Jesus, to learn to live his way, to represent him in the world, I invite you to use these next six weeks to do your own spiritual self-test. This is just between you and God. It's for you to do yourself. I can't do it for you. Only you know what needs to be done in your life. Here's three categories as a way to get started or a, a way to do this, if you like. First, your everyday life. Just to take a look at your everyday life, how you live your everyday life. Put simply, this is about evaluating how you spend your time and figuring out what your priorities are. What's most important to you in life? Many of you have heard me say before, one of the easy ways to test that is to just kind of sit down and maybe for the last week or the last month, write down how you spent your time and write down how you spent your money. 
Those are two key indicators that will give you your priorities. Sometimes we say what our priorities are, but how we spend our time and how we spend our money doesn't fit with what we say are our priorities. So you can figure it out that way. Uh, this category, and even the next one I'll mention in a moment, uh, is where fasting comes into play. It's a great opportunity for spiritual growth. In the Bible, fasting was mostly focused on, in fact, it was totally focused on doing without food. And I want to recommend that to you. I, I recommend, if you've never tried fasting before, I recommend it to you sometime during Lent. Maybe start this week and do it regularly during Lent. And there's several options. There are different ways you can do that. For instance, you could go without a particular meal on a particular day, or maybe every day. I'm going to do without this meal. Uh, maybe you go without food for a full day. I know some people at times in the past, I've, I've used like Thursday, uh, every Thursday during Lent, I was going to do without food for that day. That, that's an option for you. Or for some people, one way to do it is to do without a particular kind of food during Lent. That's a, a fairly common one. Now, the key to that is that it has to be something that you really like. Yeah, there's been many a child who volunteered to do without broccoli. I know. There's been many a child and adult who said, I'll do without vegetables during Lent. Yeah. Okay. No, this is about doing without dessert. This is about doing without meat. This is about doing without bread. This is about doing without something that you really like. Now, that gives us a switch over into the principle of fasting. It's not just about food. It can also be applied to other things. It's whatever you do like. Whatever is taking up too much of your time. Whatever's become too much of a focus, too much of energy sapping for you, and too much of a focus for you. For instance, that could be games and activities on your phone or computer device. That could be too much television. That could be too much sports. Uh, that's not to say that, that games on your phone or computer device are wrong or watching sports or television is wrong. It's just that it's taken up too much of my time too much of my focus. Whatever it is that you're going to do without, whatever it is you're going to fast from, what you're saying when, you're, when you fast is, God, you're the most important thing in my life, even more important than this, whatever it is. You're more important than this. And I'm going to do without this for a while to say to myself, to remind myself as well as you, that you're the most important thing to me, no matter what. Second category for your spiritual self-test, your devotional life. Here's the key question for this one. What do you do each day to stay in touch with God? To stay connected to this spirit who is God? That's devotional life. Common pieces of that are prayer and Bible. And so I invite you to deepen your prayer life. Wherever it is, it can go deeper. It can, it can be extended. It can be more significant for you. Um, I, I invite you to, to consider increasing your connection to the Bible. Whatever it is now, take that to another level. And there, there's a lot of different ways to do that. There are a lot of ways to, to do that. Now, um, I'm not going to spend a lot of time with that right now. I, I will quickly again mention a website that I mentioned last week, uh, upperroom.org, upperroom.org. A lot of resources there for spiritual growth. That's one option. But I would also say that I or any of our other pastors or any other teachers in the life of this church would be glad to help you with that if, if you need some help. It may be that you already know what you need to do. You're just not doing it. You've gotten out of, you used to do some of this stuff and you've gotten out of that habit and, and you just need to restore that, make a, renew your commitment to that, whatever that may be. But it also could be that you really don't know, I need some help with how to deepen my, spirit, my prayer life or how to better connect with the Bible. Let us help you. Reach out to us. Several people here who would love to do that with you. Final category for your spiritual self-test church life. Being a follower of Jesus is not an individual endeavor. 
It's something we do together as the people of Christ. So I encourage you to do an honest evaluation of your commitment to being part of our life together as the church, worshiping together, uh, being together just to fellowship, or as the young people might say, just to hang out with each other, being in small groups together to both learn from each other as well as support each other. And then serving together is a great way to grow spiritually. I don't know how many times in my life I've gone to do something for somebody else thinking that I was going to bless them and that was all the blessing that would happen. But they blessed me. I got a blessing. I I, I grew spiritually in it. Serving together can be a great way to grow spiritually. I love what uh, our missions team has developed for this uh, emphasis in March called March Missions Madness. Uh, It was mentioned earlier. I wanted to emphasize it right here. Uh, All the month of March is right in the middle of Lent. So if serving somewhere in the Chattanooga area as a part of your church life is not part of you right now, it's not your thing right now, this is an opportunity to make it your thing. This is an opportunity to begin to grow spiritually in this way in your life. There's all kinds of ways and places to serve, uh, to meet the needs of others. Uh, One particular day that I hope that you'll focus on is what we're calling uh, Service Saturday. It is Saturday, March the 18th. I hope you'll mark that, even make a note on your bulletin right now or get your phone out and go ahead and mark it on your calendar, your planner. Uh, Nine o'clock to noon, it's just three hours that day. And what I would, we're hoping to have at least 100 people involved in this. Some of it will be projects here on the campus, but other things will be happening in other places, serving others. Um, what I would invite you not to do is wait till Thursday before that Saturday to decide. You know, sometimes we want to do that. We want to, well, I'm going to wait and see what other options I got. Please don't do that. Uh, I invite you in the next week, even today, Sometime in the next week to 10 days, go ahead and make that commitment. I'm going to be a part of that. My family is going to be a part of that. Uh, The number of people that register to do this on that day will indicate how many projects we need to put together. And we can put together as many as we need to. So go ahead and make that commitment and go ahead and sign up this week so that we can get ready for that. Our overall goal for the whole month of March is 500 service opportunities for individuals or families. So go to the website. Vicki and I went to the website yesterday and signed up for Service Saturday. She had already signed up for some other mission outreach kind of opportunities during the month. And if you don't see something there that fits your schedule or fits what you uh, feel led to do, then find something else. There's all kinds of ministries and agencies and opportunities throughout the Chattanooga area to serve the needs of others. And if you go do something else somewhere else at a different time, just let Lindsay Gallagher or some of us know in the office we want to add that to this goal. But also it may be something that we want to add to offer to other people in the life of the church. So please let us know about that. Now here's the thing about this. When I invited you to bring in ramen noodles, man, you knocked that out of the park. I mean, you just blew that goal right out of the water. But in some ways that was kind of a simple thing to do. You know, you go shopping or while you're shopping, pick up some ramen noodles, you bring them by the church, you order them up and have them delivered. That's a fairly simple thing to do. This is not as simple. This takes a little bit more time and focus and energy. And would you, would you knock this one out of the park as well? Or maybe a basketball analogy, would you hit a three or, or, or have a, submit a triple-double? <laughs> Ask me if, afterwards if you want to know what that means. Uh, Let's, let's do that one as well. You see, serving together really can be. It's not about just March. It's not about just this goal that we want to do as a church. But any of this that I've talked about is about how I'm going to live my life after Easter. The difference I want to make after Easter. The change I want to see in me. I believe God wants to help me do after Easter. So let this season of Lent be a time for you to do your own spiritual self-test. And the key to that is that you pray and invite the Holy Spirit to be a part of this. This is not something you just say, I'm going to do on my own. 
but you're inviting God, the Spirit, to guide you, to help you make that honest examination, evaluation of where you stand in your spiritual journey with God. My hope for you is that you will take this season, this time, seriously so that when we get to Easter this year, it will not only be a time to remember what happened to Jesus a long time ago and what God did through Jesus, it will also be your personal Easter because you're celebrating the new life you have in Christ. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Holy God, we give you thanks for being a spirit who calls us into the wilderness at times. You call Jesus into the wilderness. You call us into the wilderness at times. You call us to a time of testing. And this season can be the perfect time for that. So guide us in that. Come among us in that. And remind us that we are to constantly be seeking to grow in our relationship with you, uh, grow in our devotional life, grow in our life together as your people. Lord, continue to teach us to be your people what that looks like, what it means to represent you every day of our lives. Teach us to be the people of Christ. In his name we pray. Amen. Ciao.
Thank you. What a great message. What a great reminder. That's exactly what we're told and we're reminded of in our baptism. We are a child. You are a child of God. Jesus was told, you're the son of God. I'm proud of you. Now go live it. And that's exactly what we're told in our baptism, to be his people. And I also love in that song, that message that says, I'm no longer, because of that, I'm no longer a slave to fear. I, don't, I can take risk because I know this God is on my side. This God loves me and wants me to get out there and give it a try, even when I mess it up. God bless you for sharing that with us. We, as always, invite you to begin or to deepen a relationship with Jesus Christ. And we believe that's done best in the life of the church. Know that you're welcome here. There's contact information for Pastor David. He'd love to hear from you if you're looking for a church family. Let's sing together as we close out our service. Let's join in singing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's sing, great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. So we go seeking to be the people of Christ. We go seeking to, to take that self-exam, that spiritual self-exam, to be honest about that, and to use these next six weeks as an opportunity to grow, to become a new people, a new person, and a new people so that we can be the people of Christ. Amen? God bless you as you go. Have a great week and hope to see you next week.